Hi guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. Today the word game Togo is up. Togo is a, a tactical game about uh, the naval battles of the 20th century. It has been uh, uh, designed by Jack Green. In a previous video I analyzed the components. Today I'm going to illustrate uh, the mechanics. Let's get started by analyzing the turn record track. Well done. Unfortunately, there is only one marker, but the players need two markers. One marker for the uh, hours and one marker for the minutes. So, guys, you need another marker. And the scenario that I'm going to analyze and illustrate is the first scenario that uh, uh, the designer himself suggests. I'm speaking of the uh, Battle of Ulsan. Uh, if you notice, we have uh, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six Japanese uh, uh, ships. Uh, the last two ones uh, arrive later and they are opposed to a force uh, um, made up of three Russian cruisers. Please remember, if you want to uh, remember the, uh, the historical notes, well, the Rurik uh, was hit uh, uh, several times and, uh, well, uh, unfortunately, uh, the Rurik was forced to reduce uh, her speed and uh, rather than surrender the ship to the Japanese, the senior uh, surviving officer, uh, one Lieutenant Ivanov, well, ordered the ship to be scuttled. The Japanese uh, picked up about 625 survivors, the rest uh, perishing in engagement. Uh, the remaining uh, two Russian cruisers escaped back to Vladivostok. Well, guys, uh, before uh, uh, beginning the scenario, well, I'm uh, putting aside the turn record track and I'm going to place on the map board the four Japanese cruisers and the, the three. Russian cruisers. Uh, well, I'm not following the uh, distractions uh, uh, given by the scenario. Why? Because um, uh, I have some problem uh, with the video. I'm going to place them at the center of the video. Izumo and uh, Azuma. Well, I'm placing them here and immediately on the back, I'm placing Tokiwa and Iwate. At 10 axes of distance, I'm placing Russia here. Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And Gromoboy, well, sorry, Gromoboy stuck with Russia and Rurik immediately behind. Well, uh, I repeat, it's a free placement, but uh, I wanted to explain you the mechanics. So it's not necessary to respect uh, the historical placement. Before starting, uh, well, the players need to uh, analyze, well, the, um, the scenario, the scenario C, uh, the scenario sheet. What does it mean? Actually, you have to understand that uh, uh, by using this uh, information, well, uh, you can mark uh, all the hits uh, that uh, the ships uh, could suffer during the game. So you have the name of the ship. In this case, well, let me change. Well, so it's uh, you can see better the, the original page. Well, you have uh, the armor cruisers, Izumo, uh, what about the speed? Well, generally, in all uh, Jack Green's war game, you have a double speed. Uh, the speed that uh, uh, the ship uh, has to maintain during the uh, odd 
turns and the ship and the speed that the ship has to maintain during the uh, even turns. In this case, we have five and five. Uh, here you have the victory points, so ten points. Armor uh, three or third class. Well, it's important when you um, when you are going to check the uh, the damages. Also the float, well, uh, it's important to consider when uh, the ship uh, suffers uh, underwater uh, damages. Torpedo, well, one factor or torpedo, well, I'm not going to dedicate much time to explain the torpedoes. Why? Because uh, they are quite ineffective in this scenario and uh, uh, well, they are important uh, only when uh, the range is uh, um, is close, so two axes or less. On the contrary, the two players have to consider with attention the uh, the type of guns that the uh, the ships uh, possess. You have in this case the primary guns. Well, uh, they are medium guns. Well, seven and six, please remember that each time the ships fire, well, they can fire with the primary guns, secondary guns, and if you notice, four, five, four. And, well, uh, I wouldn't use uh, tertiary guns. Well, we can use uh, the, uh, the word, uh, the phrase, uh, anti-torpedo guns. Actually, we can speak of light guns that uh, are uh, pretty, ineffective in, uh, uh, during the fighting. And so, if you notice, we have 13 uh, primary guns uh, factors and uh, 13 uh, um, secondary gun factors. These squares uh, uh, indicate the hull. So, generally, uh, when you suffer, when the players uh, uh, suffer a hit, at the hull, they have to uh, cross out a square, and uh, you have uh, then the two, uh, the two rows about the speed. And when uh, you suffer a damage, you have to um, you have to erase uh, the first square about the speed. Anyway, guys, I'm going to illustrate uh, deeply uh, these uh, sheets uh, during the game. Uh, obviously, you have uh, the um, each uh, each uh, ship uh, has got uh, uh, her uh, information. So we have six uh, Japanese uh, ships that are participating in the scenario, and only three uh, Russian cruisers. Uh, I repeat, uh, the two last Japanese uh, cruisers. Uh, are taking part uh, in the fighting uh, some uh, uh, turns later. Well, guys, um, it's, uh, uh, it's everything. Uh, it's over for the moment. And now, uh, before starting, I'm going to describe the sequence of play. Uh, I have forgotten to say that, uh, uh, well, the four uh, necessary dies are missing. You won't find the dice in this uh, box or in this uh, uh, ziplock. Why? Because you need two ten-sided dice and two six-sided dice. So guys, it's better to purchase them before starting the game. Now guys, let's continue with the uh, analysis of the sequence of play. The sequence of play uh, that uh, the players uh, uh, find in the word game Togo is uh, really simple. Actually, we can uh, divide it uh, into introduce reinforcements, and I repeat, in this scenario that we are going to play, we have only two uh, ships of reinforcement. That uh, then we have the torpedo launch phase, but uh, I'm only to give you some information, uh, I repeat, uh, they are really ineffective in this scenario. 
Then you have the, uh, the very important initiative determination phase that is uh, uh, determined by the highest uh, ranking commanding officer and uh, uh, nationality. Uh, in this uh, scenario, the Japanese uh, have uh, the uh, the Japanese uh, uh, will have uh, the initiative. Um, so, what does it mean? Actually, it's important when uh, you are going to uh, move the uh, the ships. Then you have the movement execution phase. Well, actually, when uh, uh, there is uh, a player. Uh, that possesses uh, the um, initiative, well, the player without the initiative has to move uh, half uh, his uh, uh, movement factors, roundup fraction, of all capital ships. Remember that when, uh, please remember that when I'm speaking about capital ships, I mean uh, a battleship, uh, uh, heavy cruisers, uh, armor cruisers. In this scenario, we have only armored cruisers and we consider them capital ships. Uh, then, after you have, in this scenario, the Russian player doesn't have the initiative, so he will have to move half uh, um, his uh, um, allowed movement points. Then uh, the players, the Japanese players, will have to move at full speed and finally the Russian player can end uh, his movement by uh, moving uh, um, the ships with the, um, with the movement points left. So guys, in in reinforcement, torpedo launch phase, initiative, movement and the gunnery execution, uh, execution phase I think that is uh, the most important part of uh, um, of the um, of the rules. Why? Because uh, I think that uh, this system is not complex, but uh, the combat will request uh, a little of attention. Why? Because uh, it's uh, very very well done, uh, very precise. And it includes each single information that you need when you are doing a naval combat. So uh, the players are requested to give um, attention to this, uh, uh, to this rule. I'm going to illustrate that deeply during the, um, during the scenario. Then, after you have completed the combat, well, you have to um, to finish the phase with a torpedo combat, and then you can advance the marker of the turn. Well, let's continue with the uh, with the scenario. Now you have an approximate idea about the mechanics, but let's uh, uh, illustrate them in a real way by playing the scenario. Battle of Ulsan. Time to move our ships. Uh, I'm putting apart the torpedo launch phase. Uh, the initiative, I repeat, the initiative is, uh, uh, is given to the Japanese player. So the side without uh, initiative, well, in this, in our case, the Russian player moves uh, half uh, his, uh, his capital ships. So, Gromo Boy, well, can move of one hex, well, pay attention. Um, the stacking, so first information, the stacking is two ships uh, each uh, hex, uh, well, please remember that the hex, uh, each hex uh, corresponds to one mile. And when the ships enter the first hex, well, the ship can turn 60 degrees. So, one, well, it's not a perfect move. I want only to give you an example. One, two, and three. So, the Russian player is moving of three hexes. The Russia uh, does the same, so one, two, three. 
well, I'm maintaining the stacking. Runic is uh, a little slower, so one and two. Now it's time. Uh, it's uh, the players, the Japanese player is up. So let's move the four Japanese uh, cruisers at full speed, five hexes. So we have one, well, two, three, well, turn, four, five. Uh, Izumo uh, does the same, so executes the same movement. One, two, three, four, five. Well, and uh, Tokiwa and Iwate uh, follow the other two ships. Now, uh, the Russian player can move uh, other two hexes. So we have one, two. And uh, I'm uh, splitting uh, the ships such way you can understand better the gunnery phase. So one and turn. And the Rurik, well, one and two. Well, unfortunately, Rurik, uh, since we have uh, the line of sight, uh, we have the Gromo Boy that uh, um, stops the Rurik from seeing the other four, the other four Japanese uh, ships. Now, last but not least, the Japanese can turn at the end of, uh, of his uh, movement. So we are going to, um, to turn these uh, two ships of 60 degrees and I'm going the same with Iwate and Tokiwa. Well, it's not the perfect move, but uh, I want uh, only to illustrate uh, the way that the two players uh, have to move. So, now the movement is over. Let's proceed with the combat phase. So guys, uh, let's explain the gunfire procedure. I repeat, count the number of hexes to the target by the shortest uh, possible route. In, the, in this case, uh, Russia is firing one, two, three, four, five. And when you have uh, five hexes uh, range, well, you have to uh, decrease the dice of 20. Uh, at the moment, uh, we are not uh, analyzing bow, stern, uh, target heading. So, um, less, uh, uh, less 20, and uh, we have only one ship that uh, is fighting. Otherwise, uh, you could have modifiers, for example, plus one for each fire counter on firing ship, plus two, two ships firing on same target, plus four, uh, when we have uh, three or more ships firing on same target, plus two if main guns fire on two different targets. Well, this is not our case. So we are firing with 13, uh, sorry guys, eight, uh, eight primary gun, well, primary medium guns against the Azuma. Well, guys, you have uh, in front of you the I'm going to show you the gunnery combat results table. I'm rolling the dice. Well, 16. A very, very good uh, uh, number. Why? Because a 16, well, you have to uh, read this uh, uh, row that uh, indicates uh, uh, the dice. You have uh, uh, the vertical column that are the total gunfire factors fired. So we have eight. Well, and uh, mm, the, the maximum that the best that the uh, Russia could get. So three hits. So the Russia, well, uh, scored three hits against uh, Azuma. Well, now the Russia could fire also with 
her secondary gun, so 4, 8, 12. So let's fire. Again, we have uh, 73. Well, uh, we have to subtract 20, so uh, 53. Well, so um, by using 12 factors, we can fire up to, or better, we can inflict losses or hit up to 24, so no effect. So, Russia has fire. Now, let's, um, let's determine the damages. Well, we have just said that the uh, Russia has uh, um, inflicted three losses, three hits, against the uh, Japanese cruisers Azuma. Well, actually, you have to read the gunnery damage table. Uh, we are using, the Russia is using medium guns. The float, or better, sorry, the armor uh, that the Izumo has uh, is of third class. So what do you have to do? Actually, you have to cross medium guns that are firing against a third uh, class uh, ship and you have to roll two uh, six sided dice. Let's roll the first one. 12. So guys, when you are scoring 12 on the uh, on this table, well 12 2 hull T T A F fire. Well, so two hull. What do you have to do? You take uh, the uh, the scenario card and uh, Izumo. Well, uh, no, sorry, Azuma. Well, you have to erase two uh, two hulls uh, from the uh, two squares from the hull hulls that uh, Azuma has available. Then. Let's roll in the, ah, sorry guys. We have then to uh, TT, well, the Azuma is losing, is a torpedo, is a torpedo uh, ability. Then, well, you have AF, AF means, uh, well, uh, um, anti-torpedo, anti-torpedo gun. So you have to uh, erase these other. And last but not least, unfortunately, you have fire. You have to place a fire marker and roll on fire table at the end of each turn. So actually, the Azuma is on fire. Well, very, very uh, a Russian player that is very, very lucky. Now, guys. Uh, let's fire with the uh, Gromo boy that uh, is uh, uh, attacking the uh, the other Japanese uh, cruiser, the Izumo. The Gromo boy has the uh, has the same uh, characteristics of the uh, Russia. So we have eight factors that are firing against Izumo. Let's roll the dice. Well, thirty-eight. The range is a five axis, so we have to subtract 20. So 18 is the final result. So you have to cross 18 with eight. You have one hit. The Gromo boy has scored one hit. Let's roll also with, uh, for the secondary uh, guns. Uh, of the Gromo Boy, as usual, 12 factors. Let's roll. 65, let's subtract 20. Well, 45, no effect. Well, uh, the minimum requested is 29, so no effect. Anyway, one hit. The Gromo Boy is using medium guns. So let's have a look at this row. Medium guns. Uh, the uh, the Izumo 
has the uh, the identic uh, um, armor class, third class. So let's roll two sided dice, 12 again. So guys, you have the same result. Two hull, uh, torpedo factor lost, uh, another uh, anti-gun, uh, um, uh, anti um sorry, uh, anti-torpedo uh, gun to uh, remove and also fire. So also the Zumo is on fire. Well, two very, very uh, heavy hits against the Japanese fleet. Now let's, uh, um, let's fire with Azumo and Izumo. Azuma, well, Azuma has uh, seven plus uh, six uh, primary factors uh, of medium guns. So we have uh, 13, let's roll the dice. Set uh, 79, well, no effect. And uh, then she's fighting with the other 13 secondary guns, 26. Uh, let's uh, subtract 20, so we have six. So the Azuma, scores six, well, scores with 12 factors, three hits of secondary or light guns. We are going to determine that later. Let's fire with Izumo against Gromo Boy. Izumo uh, has uh, uh, always 13 factors. Let's roll. And zero, this is zero, not 10. So seven, wow. And the Zumo uh, strikes uh, heavily the Gromo Boy, uh, one with 13 factors, five hits against the Gromo Boy. So the Zumo has to check five possible damages against the Gromo Boy, and the Zumo could fire also with uh, um, her secondary guns. Well, 94, no effect. Well, so let's determine the five, uh, the five hits against Russia and the five hits against the Gromobo. Ah, sorry, three hits against Russia and five hits against Gromobo. Uh, that uh, Azuma and Izumo uh, inflicted. So let me see. Please notice that the armor about the Russian cruisers is a little light, only two armor, only a secondary class armor. So they are a little uh, weaker than the Japanese uh, cruisers of British uh, production. So let's, uh, uh, let's roll the die, medium guns, uh, second class, let me see, four, well, medium gas four, HF is uh, mm, the, the ship, in this case, the Russia, has to lose one primary, primary gun factor. And I should erase this number four. Let's roll uh, um, again. Well, nine, let's uh, cross. Hull, one hit to the hull. So the uh, Russia uh, suffers one hit to the hull. Well, and you can continue uh, by uh, rolling the dice on the gunnery damage table. And please remember that uh, at the end of the phase, you have to check the damages uh, caused uh, by the fire that is aboard both of the Azuma and Izumo. And this is the fire table. Well, actually, all in all, uh, the mechanics that you find in Togo are very similar to uh, other uh, successful war games uh, designed by Jack. I'm speaking about Fleet Admiral and Royal Navy. Uh, please remember that uh, uh, Fleet Admiral, uh, the second version, uh, should be uh, released uh, this year and uh, 
well, I, um, I can't wait. I want to uh, play with the Fleet Admiral that uh, actually portrays uh, um, the naval battle, uh, mainly the naval battle of the Uton, and I think that uh, the players uh, will find other minor battles. But uh, I repeat, uh, when the players uh, um, are successful in handling the, uh, the gunnery combat result table, all the modifiers, and they have understood completely the gunnery damage table, well, the, uh, you, can, you can play a single scenario, in this case the Battle of Olsen, in, well, no more than uh, a couple of hours. And please remember that uh, in every case, the main, uh, the main battle that you find uh, in Togo is just the Battle of Tsushima. So I think uh, please play the Battle of Olsen, a couple of times and then you can proceed uh, by playing the uh, famous and turning point of this uh, war, the Battle of Tsushima. Well guys, thank you for your attention, stay tuned for the coming soon video about uh, uh, the analysis and the review of the last uh, uh, issue of Modern War uh, entitled uh, um, Naxis, Axis of Evil, a possible uh, war between Iran and the United States of America. Thank you for your attention and bye.